Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about nucleus. So coming to the introduction part, the nucleus was firstly discovered by Robert Brown in 1831. Later further investigations was done by Fleming and then Fleming discovered the inner structures, inner parts of the nucleus. But the presence of the nucleus was discovered by Robert Brown in 1831. So the structure was given by the Fleming. So this is the structure which was given by the Fleming and the parts which are present in the structure of this nucleus are outer membrane, inner membrane, perinuclear space, heterochromatin, euchromatin, nucleolus and nuclear pores. So in this video I am going to explain you detail about all of these parts. So coming to the first one, outer and inner membrane. So this is the outer outer membrane of the nucleus and this is the inner nuclear membrane of the nucleolus sorry nucleus and there is a space which is present between outer and inner nuclear membrane and that space I have mentioned here with orange color right and that space is called as perinuclear space okay so this perinuclear space will act as a barrier for this nucleus so you have to know what is maybe barrier for example if you take a house and that house consists of hall and bedroom right and that hall and the bedroom will get divided with the wall right will get separated by a wall and that wall acts as a barrier so by this you can understand what is mean by barrier so here perinuclear space will act as a barrier for this nuclear sorry for this nucleus now this perinuclear space uh, ranges with the diameter of 10 to 15 nanometers remember this point okay so coming to the second point and this endoplasmic reticulum you have to know what is mean by endoplasmic reticulum and the brief explanation of this endoplasmic reticulum was already given uh, and the link of the link of that video will be given in the description box you can watch there so, so that endoplasmic reticulum will get attached towards this outer membrane of the nucleus like this here the endoplasmic reticulum will be present okay so that endoplasmic reticulum is uh, attached towards the outer membrane of the nucleus itself coming to the nuclear pores so this nuclear pores this new how the nuclear pores are formed because of the fusion of the outer and inner nuclear membrane so if you see properly here this is the outer membrane of the nucleus right and this is the inner membrane of the nucleus so here the fusion occurs like this here the fusion of the outer and inner nuclear membrane occurs so due to the fusion what happens there is an openage which will be formed due, and that openage is called as nuclear pores and there is a major function uh, which occurs in this nuclear pores so that major function is that it mainly helps in the transport of proteins as well as the RNA molecules also. So I have said you that the uh, endoplasmic reticulum will get attached towards this outer membrane of the nucleus, right? So to know about the endoplasmic reticulum, it will be of two types. I mean, uh, it is divided into two types. They are outer endoplasmic reticulum as well as the inner endoplasmic reticulum. So what I have said you in the endoplasmic reticulum video, I have said you that this endoplas outer endoplasmic reticulum consists of ribosomes. And what is the main function of the ribosomes? It mainly helps in the uh, it mainly helps in the production of proteins, right? And the proteins which are formed in this endoplasmic reticulum will get transported into this nucleus with the help of this nuclear pores. So here, here is the endoplasmic reticulum which will get attached towards this outer membrane, right? So as it is attached towards this nucleus, then what happens? The proteins which are made up in this endoplasmic reticulum will get transported into this nucleus so the transportation occurs only because of the nuclear pores and the transportation occurs to and fro that's nothing but it, it the transportation occurs from the endoplasmic reticulum to this nucleus or from the nucleus to the endoplasmic reticulum i mean to and fro so the transportation occurs to and fro by this nuclear pores the, so that's only the main function of this nuclear pores so the rna molecules as well as the protein molecules will get transported okay and MR, normally our RNA will get synthesized in this nucleus. I am going to explain you later. And normally coming to this, uh, just uh, I am going to explain you here what is, uh, how many types of nuclei will be present. I mean type of nuclear cells will be present. So uh, in one cell, one nucleus will be present. It is said to be as mononucleated cell. And that cell, and the, that nucleus consists of identical DNA. And the cell which consists of multinuclei, I mean more than one nuclei are called as polynucleated cells. And uh, some of the cells doesn't consist of any nucleus any nucleus and those cells are called as anucleated cells and the best example of this anucleated cells are uh, erythrocytes that's nothing but red blood cells okay it doesn't consist of any nucleus so next nucleoplasm so nucleoplasm is nothing but the cytoplasm of the cell so if you see in the diagram so if you see in the diagram so this is the uh, this is the nucleus cell right and if you see this in the inside the nucleus there is a presence of a you know it is a there is a plasm which is present inside the nucleus and that plasm is called a cytoplasm in the case of cell but we are learning about the nucleus and that cytoplasm in the nucleus is called as nucleoplasm so inside that nucleoplasm there is a presence of this nucleolus as well as the uh, chromatin fibers okay so coming to this uh, nucleolus uh, the, uh, this nucleolus plays a major role in such a way that it mainly helps in the synthesis of rrna it, 
it mainly helps in the synthesis of rrna synthesis so rrna is nothing but ribosomal rna synthesis so i have said you that uh, the, what is the main function of this uh, nuclear pores what i have said you there is a transport of rna molecules right so this rrna synthesis occurs i mean the production of rrna molecules occurs so that the rrna will get transported into this endoplasmic reticulum by this nuclear pores and proteins will also get transported i mean to and from process i have said you right like that so next coming to this chromatin and one more important thing which you have to remember is that uh, nucleolus not and you should not write nucleolus we have to write nucleoli because not only one nucleolus will be present many nucleoli will be present so we have to mention that nucleoli nucleolus means singular nucleoli means plural next come into the chromatin so chromatin fibers if you see in the case of this diagram the chromatin will be of normally two types they are heterochromatin and then there is euchromatin so heterochromatin uh, this is a dark structures which i have drawn with black color or called as heterochromatin coming to the euchromatin this is a light light structures i mean this blue color structures which i have drawn are known as euchromatin so let us uh, know briefly about this hetero heterochromatin as well as the euchromatin so chromatin will be of two types heterochromatin and euchromatin which i have said enough so coming to the heterochromatin it is tightly packed and are compact structures and are less functional the dna which is present in this chromatin is not much open and it doesn't undergo transcription and replication process so if you see in the case of the diagram i have shown you the i have shown you just now the heterochromatin right and it is tightly packed so if you see here it is tightly packed i mean in the dark substances which are present in this uh, nucleus uh, many many Uh, heterochromatin fibers will be present and that heterochromatin the dna which is present in this heterochromatin is unfunctional it doesn't undergoes any function so as it doesn't undergoes any function it doesn't uh, exhibit the transcription process or replication process also so that's the main, that's a there is no function of this heterochromatin so coming to the euchromatin which is quite opposite to this heterochromatin so if you see in the euchromatin it is lightly packed it is not tightly it is lightly packed and the dna is functional and it is closed it produces mrna and it exhibits transcription and replication process so you know more normally you know about the replication right where the mother uh, dna will form its daughter individuals and that that phenomenon is called as replication so what is mean by transcription transcription process nothing but which mainly helps in the production of the mrna is known as transcription so uh, if you see the euchromatin this is quite opposite to the heterochromatin it is lightly packed and the dna is highly functional but if you see here the dna is uh, unfunctional it is less functional and it is closed and it produces mrna so next so uh, you know about the replication process i have said you just now so let us see the transcription process so that you can easily understand i am just going to give you a small introduction on this uh, transcription i am not going to explain it briefly so if you see here you normally if you take a gene and the gene consists of introns and exons right so this exons are normally formed by this transcription uh, sorry by this euchromatin okay but if you see that heterochromatin it doesn't forms any introns either it doesn't form introns or as exons okay so normally this introns and exons are present on a gene okay so by the enzyme by the enzyme called rna polymerase they it undergoes transcription process so transcription process uh, what happens in the transcription process this promoter genes will get uh, will get you know will get protruded out it will be removed and then only introns and exons genes will be present okay and that introns and exons genes are called as rna together which is formed the gene which is formed is called as rna and later ag again it undergoes a process in such a way that mrna will be formed so how the mrna will be formed by this uh, removal of this egg sorry egg normally introns will be removed and only exons will be uh, conjoined with so in such a way that due to the conjoint what happens mrna will be formed in this way this transcription process mrna will be formed so now this mrna undergoes translation and forms amino acid chain and after a formation of this amino acid chain finally the proteins will be formed by the post transcriptional modifications so this is about the nucleus friends so the notes of the nucleus will be given in the whatsapp group the invitation link of the whatsapp group will be given in the description box you can ask their notes so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box thank you